Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick teaching AP Calculus AB. We are in unit one, limits and continuity. Today's topic is topic 1.13, removing discontinuities. Enjoy today's notes. All right, for section 1.13, removing discontinuities, uh, we're gonna start uh, mostly with review from earlier in this chapter. Uh, we're recalling what is a removable discontinuity. And so if we think back to early in this chapter, we know that this term removable discontinuity is the mathematical term for what we refer to as a whole in a graph. Sometimes when we're graphing functions, we have uh, you know essentially spots where there's like an open circle in the graph. And what we have in this case is this is this is what our removable discontinuity would be. So this is the removable discontinuity. And sometimes we have removable discontinuities where uh, there is no particular value there or there might be a point that is above or below that hole in the graph. Uh, but those are all considered removable discontinuities. Now the formal definition of uh, this mathematically is a place where the limit as x approaches c of f of x exists. So the limit exists. And we know that uh, visually in this graph because we can see that from the left side and from the right side, it's going to that same y value, whatever that y value is right here. Um, and so the limit exists, which is great, but the limit itself is not equal to whatever the output is at f of c. And so if we consider this our c, we see that the limit itself is not equal to the actual point that's there. And that's again, there could be no point there or we could have like a point above or below. For example, like right there would be a place where potentially that would be our F of C and it doesn't match where the limit is. And so that's why we have this removable discontinuity. And again, we call it a removable discontinuity because we could fill in just one point on that graph to make this a continuous function. And it's just that one point that is missing. All right, let's get on to some problems. So problem number one, uh, f of x is equal to x squared minus one divided by x minus one. So if we were to graph this function, uh, there would be a hole in the graph. And so our questions here are to ask us to find the x value of the hole and find the y value of the hole. If we wanna find the x value of the hole, uh, what we can do is we wanna factor this function. And so we've got that x squared minus one over x minus one. We notice that that numerator, the x squared minus one here, is a difference of two squareds. And so if we factor that numerator, we get x plus one times x minus one. The denominator is still x minus one. Now remember, we know algebraically, if we're looking at an equation, when a whole or a removable discontinuity is going to occur because we have factors that are gonna cancel each other out. And so if I think about this denominator here, I know that if the denominator was equal to zero, then we're gonna have some sort of discontinuity. And so I'm gonna say x minus one is equal to our zero, and that is x is equal to one. Now I know because this x minus one and this x minus one cancel each other out, that this would be a whole at x is equal to one on that graph. And if I graphed it, uh, it would be undefined uh, if we looked at that table. So how do we find the y value uh, of, what, of where the whole would be? Well, uh, in this case, we can uh, use the function. Uh, we said that this x squared minus one over x minus one factors into that x plus one times x minus one over x minus one. If we actually do cancel these out, this simplifies to become x plus one. And so we're gonna take this, uh, this x value that we found uh, in the previous problem, we're gonna plug that in, and we can see that uh, this is gonna be equal to one plus the one, which is equal to two. So our y value here would be two. And if we were to graph this function, the whole would be at one comma two uh, on that function. So the x value would be one, the y value would be two. And if we filled in that one point, we would have a continuous graph. And so that is our removable discontinuity. Uh, and we, if we were to do that, we would be removing the discontinuity, which is our title for today. Problem number two, if the function f is continuous for all real numbers, and if f of x is equal to x squared plus six x plus eight, all divided by x plus four, uh, when x is not equal to negative four, then what does f of negative four need to equal? 
First off, we need to notice that they're saying that f is going to be continuous. And so if we know that this is continuous, we know that there's going to be no gaps, there's going to be no jumps, there's going to be no asymptotes, and no holes. So we would expect it to be continuous. Uh, if, they're, if they're telling us it needs to be continuous, whatever we graph this, that there's going to need to be a point uh, that might fill this in. Now, this particular function, f of x, is equal to x squared plus 6x plus 8 divided by x plus 4. Um, seeing that denominator sort of tells me that that is going to have some sort of uh, discontinuity because of that denominator when that denominator is equal to 0. Um, and so let's start with that. So we've got this x squared plus 6x plus 8 divided by x plus 4. If we factor that numerator, this is going to become... Uh, what looks like x plus 4 times x plus 2, all divided by that x plus 4, which was in that denominator. And again, thinking about what makes the denominator equal to 0, we can see that x would be equal to negative 4 would give us some sort of discontinuity if we graphed it. So I'd expect a discontinuity at x is equal to negative 4. And so that is where we're going to need to uh, figure out. We also notice that that's the same value that they're asking us uh, for this. So as it is, there is a removable discontinuity in this, uh, this function that they gave us, and we need to figure out what point that's going to be. We also notice that if we look at the factored form, that this x plus 4 and this x plus 4 would cancel each other out, giving us that this is going to simplify to just x plus 2. I'm going to then take that uh, x value where we know there might be a discontinuity and plug that in for our x value. And so that is going to become negative 4 plus 2 or negative 2. And this negative 2, what we found is essentially our y value. So the y value is negative 2. And what, we, what we're really doing here, the work that we're doing here, is uh, really finding the limit. So essentially we found the limit as x approaches this negative 4 for our f of x function, for that function that they gave us. And we said that this is going to be equal to uh, negative 2 from that work that we just did above. And so ultimately, if we wanted to fill in the, uh, the discontinuity, this removable discontinuity, we would need f of negative 4 to equal negative 2. And so notice I'm just relating it back to what they asked us. They asked us what f of negative 4 was, and so my final answer getting circled is f of negative 4 would e need to equal negative 2 if this thing was going to not have a discontinuity. Uh, number 3, let f be the function defined by f of x is equal to this piecewise function, uh, x squared minus 3x minus 18, all divided by x minus 6 when x is not equal to 6, and a when x is equal to positive 6. Um, if this is going to be continuous, so we want, uh, for what value of a is f continuous at x equals 6? If this is going to be continuous, um, this particular function up at the top, this top rule when x is not equal to 6, looks like it's going to have some sort of discontinuity when that denominator is equal to 0. Wherever that discontinuity is, we know that the a value would need to equal that so that it's filling in that gap along the way. So same as what we've done for these previous problems, I'm going to start by factoring this x squared minus 3x minus 18. That's being divided by this x minus 6. If we factor that numerator, we're going to get that this is x minus 6 times x plus 3. And this is being divided by x minus 6 as well. That denominator, if we take a look at it, again, is sort of indicating, hey, that there's going to probably be, di be a discontinuity because we're going to be dividing by 0 at some point. And that's going to be when this x minus 6 is equal to 0 or when x is equal to 6. Conveniently for us, that's this a value that they're having us look find. Uh, and so what we know is that this factored form, this x minus 6 times x plus 3 over x minus 6, has to equal the a value when x is equal to 6. So when x is equal to 6. And that's going to be if this thing is going to be continuous. Now, I'm not worried about the fact that this says, you know, it's not equal to 6 up here because uh, the piecewise function, you know, we're, we're trying to make these two points match up. Um, and so if they perfectly were in the, the correct spot, then this would be a continuous function, which is the goal for this. So how do we do it? Well, 
you know, we've got this factored form. Let's cancel out these x minus 6s. That tells us here that uh, this x plus 3 has to be equal to whatever a is. And we know that the x in this case is going to be 6. And so 6 plus 3 has to be our a value. That means that a is going to be 9 for this problem. So if a were exactly 9, this would be a continuous function. This uh, graph that we would have would have no hole in it. We would have removed the, the discontinuity for this particular problem. Uh, we have some practice problems for you. Uh, if you would try those out, take a look at the answers that have been posted. There's also some test prep problems, which are really good to think about what this might look like on the AP exam. Check those problems out and have a great rest of your day.